All right, what is up, you beautiful people? Uh, and I know I promised this aura review bro uh, video like last week, but I uh, haven't been able to get down to do it until now. Uh, so here it is. I'm going to be reviewing the auras that you get from the Direct Strike Weekly Brawl, the Aura Brawl. Uh, and let's just jump into it. So I have it set up so that I have the aura and we're going to talk about who's best on it, who's okay, and who's nope on it. So uh, all of the commanders in the best tier for water um, all have some sort of casting ability because water gives cooldown speed. So, for example, Abathur is really good with just his Vipers, his um, Swarm Hosts cast faster, and just having plus one armor on Abathur in general makes it better because Abathur really just wants a tank. Uh, Artanis, water cooldown speed is great on his Archons uh, and decent on his Tempest if you ever decide to use those, but the plus one armor is also a great um, addition to Artanis' wave. Borazun, safe to say, just has every unit I think Borazun has basically casts something. So water's pretty good uh, on that. It just gets up more abilities. And Nova has uh, abilities on a lot of her units. And having extra armor also makes her units much better. Swan, um, the only ability, the only unit that casts abilities on Swan is his Science Vessel. But let's be honest, Science Vessel is so good um, that, you know, Having water is just makes it just makes it so much better. And having the extra armor makes uh, his units a lot tankier as well. Han and Horner, I thought about this. I put it in okay, but I think Han and Horner is actually uh, pretty good with water as well. Um, because with water, um, your Daimos Vikings, which is like basically going to end up being the core of your army, uh, will cast a lot of abilities, and the extra armor will keep them alive better, right? Um, and also, your Hellbats and... Actually, no, your Hellions... Uh, will cast a lot of abilities as well as um, your widow mines. So I think Han and Horner being uh, really good with water as well. Uh, in the okay slot, we have people who I would say kind of benefit from either the armor or the cooldown, but not from both too well. So like Stukov, Liberators benefit from the cooldown, but you know, that's, that only works out if you need to build Liberators. Everything else you have doesn't really use it. Uh, armor is okay on Stukov. Kerrigan is just the armor, I think. I don't think, she, like, maybe her Hydralisk could benefit from it, but, like, there's probably a better, there's a better modifier for that. Uh, Tychus is okay with water, because I think, like, the cooldown speed is pretty good on his, on his outlaws, uh, and the water makes him just tankier. Uh, it might be really good, well, it might be really okay on Tychus, depending on how you see it. Um, but Tychus just doesn't, um, benefit from the modifiers in the same way, I would say. Uh, Phoenix, casting. Mm, only his disruptors do casting, and then like I think his heroes have some abilities, um, and that's about it. Not really, not really OP OP. I would say, Alarak, uh, same thing. I think only Alarak himself casts, and like his mothership casts, and I think that's it. Um, the armor is appreciated. Um, the Haka, mm, the Haka casts, the creepers cast. I think um, but that's about it. The extra armor is not too bad. And extra armor on Karak's is not too bad either. And I, I think only the Mirages cast. Actually, no, Karak's has a bunch of things that, that cast, like Mirages and Immortals. So, you know, honestly, Karak's only has like six units or something, like six viable units that like actually deal damage. So maybe it's actually pretty good on Karak's. I don't know. Uh, but that's just a Karak's thing. And then in the Nope section, it's just people who don't either use the cooldown speed enough or they don't use the armor enough or it's both. For example, Manx, you really don't need the cooldown unless you're running like Emperor Shadows and that would have you know what you're facing first, right? Uh, and the one armor is like mm, kind of useless, I would say, on Manx, because most of your boys just have too low of a health to take advantage of that extra armor. Stepman, something similar. Um, I don't think he has any... Like, I think Gary casts, and then like his Ultralisks casts. Um, I guess if you're going in Festers, this might be okay, but... Uh, yeah, not really. Like, the plus one armor doesn't really do much for Stepman's wave, mostly because um, you just get a lot of small units, uh, or Banelings, and then you just blow up, right? Um, so yeah, Rainer, mm, no casting. I don't think Rainer has anything, any unit that casts spells. Uh, and once again, same issue as Manx, too many small units to really benefit from the extra armor. And Zagara, you... I don't think anything Zagara has does any spell casts. Uh, and... Zagar, you don't really need your units to stay alive for longer. You just want your units to do more damage. So the armor is basically wasted on her. Let's go into air. Air is probably one of the wackiest modifiers. Um, it basically is like a baby version of force. 
So it gives half the range that force gives, and it gives half the move speed that force gives. And then it gives you some energy regen. This is like a really weird modifier. I don't know who would actually pick it up, but um, my guesses are Swan with the Science Vessels would be really good. Abathur, I'm thinking maybe the Vipers could benefit from this in the energy regen section, so they don't have the leech, but Vipers also have that leech ability already, so I don't know about that. Uh, Artanis might be OP in this, on this because of the energy regen on his Archons, could be really good. Uh, the extra range really doesn't end up playing much of a factor uh, into this. Um, Stepman, I'm thinking energy regen. I don't know if this energy regen actually benefits Stepman either. Um, but if it does, it should be pretty good. It should add on to it. I think it, I think it should. And Rainer, I want to have it here because it gives Rainer that move speed and a little bit of range, which is actually highly underestimated because Rainer's units have quite a small range, right? And um, if you're building medics, uh, your medics regenerate energy faster. So it's pretty good for Rainer bio, I would say. Uh, everyone else that it's okay on is only okay, I would say, mostly for the reason that you're getting that extra range and move speed, and that's never really to be underestimated. Um, but like, yeah, that's really why it's okay. And, 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 and the people who are nope on it is that, I don't know, Carax is like, you literally don't benefit from this besides on your sentries. So it's like, okay, excellent. You, you pick the modifier that completely sucks. On top of the fact that you're Carax. Uh, Phoenix, I don't believe Phoenix himself regenerates energy, so I don't think getting energy regen is going to do anything. Um, and also, this is a pretty whack modifier. Uh, please don't pick it. I, I usually no, I usually never pick this modifier because I, I have no idea where it's applicable. And the Haka, you don't really need that move speed and range. Like It's, it's kind of pitiful. Um, and I don't think the Haka is anything that uses energy either. So yeah. Like, I mean, I guess maybe, like, Kerrigan might use it, but, like, everything else, like, this this is, this is a, by far, I would say, the weirdest and probably the weakest modifier. Next, you can tell if a modifier is weak based on uh, how many people are best with it and how many people are okay with it. So, life is probably, I would say, one of the best modifiers, hands down. Uh, everyone who is in the best tier has a lot of small, spammable units uh, that they can build in large amounts. Or they have a medium-sized unit that does a lot of DPS. Uh, for example, like Kerrigan and the Hydralisk, or even Stepman and his Hydralisk, right? Or Stepman and his Zerglings. Uh, Stukov can spam a lot, Manx can spam a lot, Rainer can spam a lot. Zagara, you might be wondering why life is here, but Hunter Killers having more life is actually insane. Uh, yes, the rest of your units are just going to die, but whatever. Um, and life benefits your Swarm Host on, um, on um, Apather, so your, your, your Locusts actually get tankier. Um, and that being said, also, Abathur's units are usually quite small, so they clump up a lot. So having that extra HP helps them just take a lot more AoE. Han and Horner life um, is really good for Han and Horner's ground units, uh, which you kind of want to keep around anyways to the late game because you want to make sure your breakpoints are good. Uh, the characters that are okay just can't spam small units as much, right? You know, Nova, like, the cheapest units you can spam is a Marine, and it's not really that good if you're trying to spam Marines, like, Force Marines. Um, Alarak doesn't really have a small spammable unit besides, like, maybe, like, the Slayer, but you don't really need life on a Slayer. Um, Dahaka, you, I guess, actually, I'm gonna say Okan Dahaka, only because Dahaka has some better modifiers, but you could spam, like, small Dahaka with, like, Ling, Roach, uh, Hydralisk, and then just slap in Ultralisk and Tyrannosaurus later. That build's not really good scaling wise because it's basically a rain or bio but like slightly worse um but it does have a lot of health artanis doesn't spam as much either like his units are expensive you can go like pure beyblade artanis that could work uh, but then you're building pure beyblade artanis and then you get countered by some flames um swan is kind of self-explanatory not spam unless you're building like goliaths but you know then you're building goliaths into whatever which you know not not a good idea uh Carax is okay but mm, you know extra life can't hurt uh, Phoenix, I think Phoenix might actually be not too bad, but honestly, Phoenix's units are so tanky already that the extra 30 health doesn't really seem to make a difference, and he's also very expensive. Vorazun, same deal, maybe it might be really good on Centurions, because then now Centurions have, like, close to 300 health with their Dark Coil ability. Um, but then that's just HP, right? And the hard nope is Tychus, because, uh, as you know, Tychus' units cost a hefty 650, so, uh, you're not gonna be getting much out of this, so just don't pick this one on Tychus. Next, I want to say time is probably the best aura in the game because it's got something for everyone. Um, so it's got attack speed. The 8% attack speed might not seem like a lot, but it's actually pretty good. It's half as much as shadow, right? Um, that's already really good, I would say. It's, it's not to be underestimated. And the cooldown speed, basically anyone who can use water but wants to use it more aggressively can pick time. 
Uh, and so I just have everyone slotted in there in the best slot. So everyone in the top in the top slots can either utilize uh, time by utilizing the attack speed, or actually no, people who are in best can utilize both the attack speed and the cooldown reduction. Right? For example, Artanis' units take a long time to fire. With a bit of attack speed, they actually fire a lot faster. So it's really good. Um, and he already has casters, right? Nova is pretty good here because Nova's units, like, um, just having a little bit more attack speed doesn't hurt. And especially if you're going to spam tanks, tanks take a long time to take, take their shots, right? Um, and you have that added cooldown reduction for whatever else you might need, other utility. Alarak, Wrathwalkers, attack speed, really good. Um, and I want to say here, Karax is pretty good with this one because the cooldown speed is going to be really great on his Immortals if you need to spam them, on his Mirages if you need to spam them, and giving, giving at least his Mortals a bit more attack speed or his Carriers more attack speed or his Colossus more attack speed, not too bad. Um, so yeah, and then the OK tier is like they can make use decent use of like either one of them. Uh, for example, Rainer is pretty good with the attack speed, mm, not as much with the cooldowns. Uh, I think same thing for Statman. Attack speed's mm, pretty beneficial here. Swan, I would say more so cooldown, but because he lost the armor component, I think it's not as great. But I don't know if you if you spam tanks, it's not too bad as well. You're just like a little squishier. Um, Stukov, mm, attack speed could benefit him. I don't know. I I just think this is overall one of the best modifiers. Uh, next one is Shadow. So this one's just a very aggressive version of time, just pure attack speed. Uh, and I think I want to say like anyone who has access to um tanks can build shadow with the exception of swan i would say because mm, swan's tanks take some time to set up i think like rainer and menx tanks are really good with this and nova tanks are good with this because usually when nova's tanks set up they don't unsiege because they end up having so much range so that's why i want to i like i have swan down there because also swan doesn't really benefit from the shadow upgrades um besides from his tanks um uh, most of his units you would rather have a, a wave that is more durable, I would say, as Swan, than a wave that is more aggressive. Because Swan can't really have an aggressive wave. He doesn't have like units that have stim and they run down and they deal massive amounts of damage, right? Uh, but anyone who does have a very aggressive wave, for example, uh, with Mengsk uh, or Raynor, uh, you can utilize Shadow very well. And I want to say you can utilize Shadow very well on Alarak as well, especially on those Wrathwalkers. Uh, Nova can use Shadow on, her, on most of her units uh, pretty nicely. Um, Artanis, I want to say if you're spamming Tempest, Shadow is really good because it makes your Tempest attack much faster. Um, and Han and Horner, basically everything Han and Horner has uses Shadow very well. Um, and Kerrigan, I want to say Shadow is good because of her Hydras. It doesn't really end up increasing the Hydra attack speed by too much, um, but also helps you out with your Ultras and just Kerrigan herself. Uh, Karax here with Shadow is because if you're going ground Karax, your Colossus are just going to slice everything to pieces. Uh, and your carriers are going to attack faster too. So like just having more powerful backline doesn't hurt. Uh, Commander's in the okay section. Um, I don't know. I think Zagar is okay with Shadow. Might be better to... Actually, I don't know. I feel like maybe I could put Zagar up in like best for Shadow. I think Zagar might actually fit in best for Shadow. Um, Stukov's Shadow is actually not too bad if uh, you have like bunkers and um, tanks and just lots of boys. Um, it's very aggressively built, but it's like, I think with Stukov, I prefer to have something that's like right in the middle, where it's like a little bit of aggression, but also a little bit of uh, a little bit of tankiness. So modifier that does that. Or I rather prefer to have more health on Stukov most of the time. Um, or more attack damage rather than attack speed, because most, like, the only thing that you want to get attack speed for on Stukov is your tanks, and they're really expensive. Uh, so you probably won't have too many of them, so you're not going to benefit from it too much. Um, and yeah, I think like Stepman kind of self-explanatory because, uh, the only thing that are, that are going to end up attacking are going to be like your lurkers, your hydras, your ultras, and your lings. Your lings and ultras already attack super fast. So this is like a diminishing return modifier. Gary at super Gary speed also attacks super fast. So like you really, it's like an okay, it's an okay modifier. You don't really need it. Maybe you can benefit the corruptors. Uh, an increase attack speed on Tychus is okay. Um, just gives more DPS, but Tychus is a special case because you can't utilize it as well. And I'll say Nope is like also Vorazun is kind of Nope because like the increase attack speed is not too bad, I guess. But you know, I'm just thinking about Vorazun's air units, right? None of her air units benefit from Shadow. And at the end of the day, Vorazun air is going to be what you're going to want to have in the late game. Like um, the Stalker Stacker is useful, but it doesn't really do much damage, right? Um, and so in the late game, you're probably going to want to go air and Void Rays do not benefit from this. Uh, I mean, they do, but it's like diminishing because it's like they already attack so fast, right? So it's not as great. Earth. Uh, Earth, basically any commander that is very has very big units, 
uh, will benefit from Earth or wants to build a wave that is really tanky. So Swan, bam, no brainer. You can get eight armor Ares bots, seven armor Hellbats, really good. Basically take no damage from Zerglings. Um, Han and Horner, I would say Earth is really good on um, your capital, not your capital ships, but like your bigger your bigger ones, like the like your Vikings and your Wraiths. Just having more armor on them just keeps them alive more. Um, your ground units are going to die regardless. Like maybe the Hellbats having more armor will be helpful. Artanis, Crusher, Artanis comp, get that armor on there. Dahaka also is very good with that armor because Dahaka himself is huge, right? He has a huge health pool and most of his units have massive health pools, right? You can go like Tyrannosaurs or something to get even more armor. Uh, Phoenix is not too bad with Earth if you're going for like a defensive comp or even just like because most of his units have a lot of health already. Like if you're spamming Legionaries, right? Legionaries with plus two armor. Plus two armor also benefits shields, by the way. You're going to have like five armor Legionaries basically with at full weapons, like at full armor and shields upgrade. And that's pretty, that's pretty tough to contend with. Um, especially if your opponent has like only like small like you know pea shooter guys. Nova, um, most of your units are very expensive, very tanky. Uh, armor just makes that better. Um, okay, is Tychus? Tychus is not too bad with the armor. Um, Stepman is not too bad with the armor. With uh, Gary being tankier and your ultras being tankier, uh, your lings being tankier doesn't really make a difference. But you know, like that's okay. Uh, Stukov with more ar with more armor is actually pretty good. Uh, I'm just thinking about your bunkers being tankier. Your boys being tankier doesn't really make a difference because your boys don't have the health pool to support it. Uh, but your units that can support it, I think your Apocalypse can get up to like 12 armor. 10 armor or 12 armor? Something something like that. Uh, Abathur, you can have a lot of fun with some roaches uh, and biomass and having earth on them. Because I think if the roaches, they gain like 6 armor when they're at half health. So if you, I think you, have, you can have like an 11 armor normal roach, um, which is pretty, pretty pog. Kerrigan with the armor, not too bad on our ultras. Mm, nothing else really benefits from it. Uh, Manx, Manx's royal guards will benefit from this, and his ultras will benefit from this really well. Mm, everything else he has just kind of doesn't have a health pool to support it. Um, <clears throat> flame boys might be pretty good with it though. You can get like I think you can get like six or seven armor flame boys, especially if you put like a black hammer at the front. Um, Alarak has. Alarak's Earth, I think, is pretty good on Alarak himself, because, you know, him being tankier means he eats less chicken nuggets, or eats them less fast, uh, and motherships. <clears throat> In the nope section, I would say um, these commanders don't have units that can support Earth well. So, for example, like Rainer, like, yes, you can get, like, a 7 armor fire bat, but it's also a fire bat with 200 health, so you're just going to get blown up anyways, right? Um, and Rorazun, maybe your Centurions will benefit from Earth, maybe if you're going Stalker Stacker, Earth might be okay. Um, but then that means you're just going for like a Meat Shield comp. If you're going for like something that's like a little bit more DPS-y, like Earth doesn't really benefit your flying units as much. Um, it actually is really good against you um, because your your flying units don't do a lot of damage either. Um, or not, not a lot of damage, but like, like your Void Rays do a lot of damage against armor targets and your um, Corsairs do a lot of damage against light targets. But if you're hitting things that are not armored slash light, then they do like pitiful amounts of damage. Earth is actually really good against Warzone in that manner. Zagar, you really don't need to keep your wave alive with Earth. If anything, you want to keep it alive with life. Um, because I don't know. You 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 really don't need that extra armor and Earth Earth is worse on your hunter killers because most of the time, um, you just want more health on them. <clears throat> and Karak's with art with Earth is like I guess your carriers can benefit from it, but then you're just building carriers which um if there is an answer to them you can have a bad time basically Carax. uh i also want to say ice is probably one of the best modifiers as well um it takes a bit of what life gives which is 30 hp uh and it gets a bit of armor in there and so basically it makes up for some of the weaknesses of ice and some of the weaknesses of earth for example uh, because earth usually like you want to have it on a commander who has a lot of health or has units with a lot of health, right? But if you, have, if you have a commander who has a lot of small units, then you can't really utilize that extra armor as much. But I think Ice is probably one of the safest picks if you just don't know what you're doing, and you're just like, all right, I'll pick Ice, right? Or Time, Time is a really good one too. So uh, Manx can use Ice very nicely. Uh, it makes your boys tankier by a little bit, not as much as life does, but honestly, pretty good. Uh, Stukov, same reasoning. Zagara, uh, same reasoning, because the actual health bonus here, I'm thinking of a health bonus on Hunter Killers, and health bonus on your roaches if you choose to build them, and even on your banelings. Like, that little bit of health is, is going to be huge, right? Um, the armor, not so much, but I would say it's still really good. Uh, Rainer, same idea, right? The armor is, we're not really here for the armor, we're here for the health, right? Um, Abathur, same thing. Han and Horner, same thing. Dahaka, same thing. 
Uh, actually, Dahaka is actually even better because you get to have the extra armor on all your thick boys, but you also get to have extra health on all your small boys. Uh, and so this is actually probably really good on Dahaka. Um, I, I would say it's better than Earth, because in Earth, like, like, your small boys don't benefit as much. They still benefit, but not as much, um, I would say. I guess your roaches are still pretty good, but yeah. Um, Stepman, same thing here, having extra health on your links and then giving some extra armor, immaculate. Um, same thing with Kerrigan, extra health links, extra health hydras, very important. Uh, and then extra armor on, on ultras, excellent thing. Uh, everyone who's okay could utilize it to a lesser degree, right? They can't spam as much or, you know, they would rather have slightly more armor. Um, so yeah, most of these guys can't spam as hard um, as the guys in the best tier. So yeah, let's go. Next one we have Force. Force is actually a very highly underrated modifier. Do not sleep on this one. Um, that plus one range is killer. It's really good if you can spam a lot of guys and you have to run in. So the move speed really makes them just fly right off the screen. Uh, and the extra range like makes your squishy squishy units like Marines or you know Manx's troopers um, deal a little have a bit of a better matchup against some things like I don't know Colossus or tanks or something because they can start shooting faster. They can run in faster, so they'll spend less time, say, in Karax's Colossus fire, right? Um, and just, you know, be able to stay alive a little bit longer, do a little bit more damage. Which is why Manx, Stukov, and Zagar are there. Uh, and I want to say the Protoss Commanders are all there with Force, because um, just having more range on your Siege units... Like, okay, so Artanis is really good with this, because uh, your Dragoons end up getting, like, 9 range. So they're basically like a Siege unit. Um, which is excellent, because that means you have a tier 1 siege unit. Well, not really a siege unit, but, you know, like a tier 1 fire support unit. Um, and having more move speed just generally helps out. With Karax, um, Sentinels will yeet themselves in faster. And if you're going ground, your Colossus will have slightly better range, uh, which is not too bad. Um, and, like, the range upgrades, I don't know, I think the range upgrades is, is really, really underestimated. Uh, Phoenix here... Um, pretty good because your adepts have a small range, so just giving them that extra range really makes up for that small range uh, of theirs. Uh, basically makes that so they can contest, they can kind of contest marines, they'll have 5 attack range instead of 4. Um, Vorazun, you have a lot of very powerful melee units, making them run faster is good. And if you're going stalkers, uh, it's also pretty good because they can get back into the fight faster. Everyone who's okay... Um, could use force nicely if you have nothing else to pick. Like, say your other choice is like air or something, um, and like something else that doesn't work for your commander. Uh, force is not too bad um, because you know tanks with more range is what I'm thinking. Wrath walkers with more range is what I'm thinking. Rainer boys running in faster, engaging faster, right? Um, but not the optimal pick, but not actually the worst pick. The only principle I would say nope on is like Tychus, because I really don't think Tychus with the extra range really does too much. It might do a lot more than I think, right? But I feel like that, like, like I think Tychus has like six range himself, and then so seven range is like, I guess it's okay. I think maybe the move speed might be more important, but we'll see. I really don't think this is that great on Tychus. Um, and Stepman doesn't really need more move speed. He, he's got his modifier for that, like his, his ability. Um, and the plus one range really only benefits his Geary and Hydralisk if he chooses to build them. So mm, not much benefit there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then, I don't know, Han and Horner and Dahaka. Let's see, Han and Horner range upgrade, generally good. Increased move speed, generally good. Uh, Dahaka generally wants to run in there, so that's pretty good. Range. Um, could be useful on his Impalers and his Hydralis. And same thing for Kerrigan. Having, having Hydralis with a little bit more range is pretty good. Okay, so Blood is probably one of the strangest modifiers. I want to just mention that in the Nope tier, I have basically every Protoss Commander because Blood does not benefit shields. It only benefits your HP. And so Protoss units, as you know, take damage on their shields first and then their HP. Um, so basically you have half, you have half the health pool um, to utilize this with. Even Phoenix, who has like a fat health pool on his units, doesn't really work with blood. And also Zagar. Zagar doesn't need the blood because uh, you want your units to die, um, so you really don't want to get any value out of blood, or you're not going to get any value out of blood if you get it. Um, so yeah, the people who use blood the best have probably like the biggest units, or they will have a roster full of big boys. Tychus, bam. All your guys have upwards of like 500 health, 
except for Sam. But, you know, they have a huge health pool. Uh, Han and Horror makes use of this on your capital units. It's like your Vikings, your Wraiths, I don't know, your BCs, right? Because they also regenerate health outside of combat, right? So if they survive a fight, right, this blood is going to be going in a fight, right? So they'll be, they'll be recovering. And then if they survive a fight, they'll be full health for the next one, which is going to be insane for your stacking. Uh, Kerrigan Ultralisks are big. They heal. Having more health on them doesn't hurt. Really good. Uh, Dahaka, same mentality. He has big boys. They don't really heal. But, you know, blood keeps them alive. Blood keeps him alive. Uh, Nova has mostly big units. Blood, definitely very useful. Uh, people who are okay with it have some units that can use blood very well and some units that don't. Um, so it's like not like a you know instant pick modifier. For example, Swan, mm, like I would say maybe your Hellbats could make use of blood. Like their health pool is kind of small. Your Ares bots definitely can use them. Your Thors definitely can use them. Even your Science Vessels can use them. So like it could help out your Science Vessels. So blood might be actually a sleeper OP on Swan. I'm not sure, but it might be OP. Um, Rainer, mm, your bio units could benefit from this. Um, and it, you, I don't know, like, if it would really help against, like, you know, just big damage, which will just basically one-shot your guys. Um, but your Hyperion can utilize it exceptionally well. Um, so there's also that. Um, and Stukov, same idea. Bunkers are really good with this. Um, I guess your Diamondbacks aren't too bad as well. Um, but your basic boys don't really do as much. Um, so, a mm, bit of a trade-off there. Um, uh, Stepman, same thing. Super Gary. Excellent with blood, I would say. Ultralisk, also great with blood. Um, I don't know about his Zerglings, though. I think it might actually complement his Zerglings very well, in the sense that you can have energy regen as your modifier on, instead of health regen. And then the Zerglings use their Immortal Shield. The Immortal Shield starts depleting, but they're also healing up with blood. So that might be Sleeper OP. I'm not too sure about that. I haven't really tested that out yet. And then Manx can kind of use blood with his Royal Guards. Not so much on his boys, but his Ultralisk could also make use of it a little bit, a little bit. But your Ultralisk are probably going to just be running in there and dying. So that's that's basically the men's experience. Uh, Abathur, same thing. If you Biomass your units, your Biomass guys will definitely benefit from blood. Um, if you end up building your Leviathans or Brutalisk, blood is really good. <clears throat> and here we have Fire. So Fire is really good on anyone who can spam lots and lots of small units or desperately needs the attack damage upgrade. Looking at Karak's right now. Uh, so basically everyone in the best tier can spam lots of small units that can take the most advantage of fire. Because basically fire is only really as good as the amount of units you can spam. So if you can only buy like one guy, great, you got plus two damage on that one guy. But if you can buy 50 guys, you got plus 100 attack damage, technically, technically, not effectively, because, you know, they have to, like, walk in and start firing and stuff, right? But basically, everyone up there in the best tier can take, can make use of fire. I want to say Phoenix is actually very good with fire um, because of the legionary spam, or even Adepts, Adepts having more attacks. Like, Phoenix Gateway is great with fire. Everything else, don't bother. Um, but Phoenix Gateway is insane with fire, I would say. Karax, fire just makes it so that he doesn't get completely demolished by armor. Um... Uh, Mostly because most of the characters like powerful units, as in his Mirage and his Carrier, do like 8 attack damage or 10 attack damage. So it's like pitiful. Uh, with Fire, that sort of mitigates some of the issues. Unless, of course, your opponent has Earth, then you basically nullify it, right? Um, in the OK tier, Fire is like, you know, they can kind of spam and it's like kind of OK. Like, for example, Alarak Fire is really OP if you have to go, rep if you have to go Vanguards. But like... Anything else, fire kind of sucks on Alaric, I would say. Nova, fire is good if you are going for... Um, actually, you know what? Fire's okay on Nova. Like, your Goliaths benefit from it decently, even though like they already do like 30, 37 damage, I think, at max weapons. Um, but, you know, and there's a better modifier for Nova. That's, that's why I have her fire as okay. Um, Swan, also same idea, right? Like, maybe you could spam Goliaths, but you can't really spam them that much, and also if you're spamming Goliaths, you have a really squishy wave. There's a better modifier for Swan. Unless you, I think maybe Wraiths might be okay with it, but then you're also going Wraiths. Um, Abathur, Fire's not too bad on Locust, um, but in general, better modifier. Um, Han and Horner, Fire's not too bad on your Wraiths and your Deimos Vikings. Um, definitely not like an instant pick, but it's a viable pick. And um, Stepman makes your Zerglings a little bit better, makes your Gary slightly better. 
uh, makes your Baneling slightly better. Not too bad, right? But not the greatest. And in the Nope section, I have Tychus because I think Tychus doesn't actually take advantage of fire good enough or well enough. Like, Tychus the hero is excellent with fire because he shoots like five times per second. So that's plus 10 damage. Um, but everyone else, I don't think really benefits from the fire because every Tychus unit does like upwards of like 30 damage per auto attack. So fire is like great. I got plus like 1% increased damage. Um, so I really don't think fire is that great on here. Uh, Artanis, um, his units don't attack fast enough and you can't really spam them enough. Like you have to buy like lots of Dragoons and Dragoons aren't really that great against things that aren't armored. So you're going to be in for a rough time. Artanis doesn't also have any like multiple attackers either. So fire, not that great. Storm. I want to say Storm here is kind of like a little bit of a more um, versatile version of Fire. Uh, and so I would say anyone who was good with Fire is going to be very good with Storm. Just because that plus one damage and then that extra energy regen. For example, Rainer, Medics are much better now, right? Um, actually, that's the only person who uses energy, I think, um, up there. Yeah. I don't know. I basically just I basically just took Artanis and moved him from the Nope tier to the OK tier because now he gets energy regen, so his Archons are not too bad. Um, I would say the same reasoning stands for Storm as Fire. Um, yeah, like maybe it might be a little bit better on Swan because his Science Vessels are a bit better, but mm, don't know about that. But yeah, basically the same thing I would say. Um, but also Storm is not really as good of an instant pick as Fire. Like Fire, I think if like if you want to go something aggro. Boom, definitely pick fire. Storm is sort of like a okay, I get I didn't get fire, but you know, at least I got storm sort of thing. Um so yeah. Oh, and that's the end. That was the tier list. Oops. <laughs> that's the tier list from like last last week. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. Um should I put a game on this? No, I'm just gonna leave this video by itself. There we go. Um yeah, next time. I'll see you guys later.